Welcome to the Using Lay Language in Health Communication series. This is Module 4, Clear Communication Techniques. In this module, we will cover putting plain language into practice through effective communication, effective patient-provider interactions, substituting words for better comprehension, and best practices including the teach-back method. In Module 3, we discuss some tools and resources to help you make written health materials easy to understand. In this module, we will discuss how to put these ideas of using plain language into practice, both for written materials and for verbal communication. Effective communication is very important when delivering health care. It should be bi-directional. If either the patient or the healthcare provider lacks clear understanding of the information given, the delivery of care is compromised and can have profound effects. All staff that come into contact with patients have a role to play. In both written and verbal interactions, pay attention to the words you use. As you are educated as health professionals and enter the medical field, you learn a vast array of medical terminology, abbreviations, acronyms, and jargon. This, of course, is needed to be an effective provider and deliver quality care. However, medical jargon used to shorten and ease communication between health professionals can cause confusion and diminish understanding between professionals and patients. Here are some examples of medical jargon. As we go along, see if you can think of an alternative term that you could use when talking with patients or in written materials. Instead of cardiac, heart. Instead of abdomen, stomach, tummy, or belly, depending on your audience. Upper respiratory system, nose, throat, or windpipe. Medication, drug, pill, or medicine. Many factors affect patients' ability to understand and retain or recall the information given in a visit. In addition to unfamiliar medical terminology, Patients are often overwhelmed with a multitude of details and new information during an office visit, or they may be stressed about their health. Using short sentences is a good practice because sentences that are long or complex can be overwhelming and too much to process. Additionally, it is estimated that more than 50% of information given during an office visit is forgotten in the first five minutes afterwards. One great strategy to encounter that is to focus on two to three of the most important points you need to cover with the patient. Even those with advanced degrees can often feel overwhelmed or anxious about a health issue, leading to the possibility of lower health literacy depending on the situation and context. Low health literacy can affect anyone of any age or education level. It's not possible to tell a person's health literacy from their appearance, background, age, education, language spoken, or culture. With this in mind, attention should also be paid to the non-medical words used. Using simpler, more commonly understood words goes a long way toward better understanding for everyone. Here are some examples of non-medical words that could be replaced with plain language terms. As we go along, see if you can think of an alternative term that you could use when talking with patients or in written materials. Instead of eliminate, get rid of, stop, or end, Instead of participate, take part. Instead of pending, 
waiting on something or someone or coming sufficient enough for verbal communication the teach back method is considered best practice the teach back method is an evidence-based health literacy intervention that promotes adherence quality and patient safety the best way to confirm patient understanding of what you're conveying is to ask them to show you or tell you what you just told them. A perception that a patient is non-compliant or is non-adherent to the plan for care may often be due to a lack of clear understanding. At first, it may take a while to establish the use of the teach back method, but once you routinely use it in practice, it will not take additional time to use it with every patient encounter. It will also take practice to feel confident using the method. If it's done poorly, the patient might feel you are being condescending. Here are some examples of using teach back in practice. I want to make sure that I explained your medication correctly. Can you tell me how you're going to take this medicine? We covered a lot today about your diabetes and I want to make sure that I explain things clearly. So let's review what we discussed. What are the three strategies that will help you control your diabetes? What are you going to do when you get home? Or these instructions can be confusing and I want to make sure you understand. Can you tell me how you plan to give the medication? For more information and tips and examples, see the Always Use Teach Back Toolkit. In general, strategies for clear communication and using Teach Back effectively include giving a warm greeting, maintaining eye contact, listening carefully, being aware of the patient's body language as well as your own, speaking slowly and concretely in conversational language, using graphics and demonstrations when appropriate, and encouraging patient participation in questions. Your body language should encourage and show an expectation of questions and that you have time to answer them. Maintaining eye contact, not interrupting, and using open-ended questions are good ways to ensure that patients understand what is communicated and that you understand their concerns and questions, addressing any potential barriers to comprehension and preventing any potential adverse consequences for their health. For more information, see the 10 Elements of Competence for Using Teach Back Effectively document in the Always Use Teach Back Toolkit. So some key points to remember in this module. It takes time and practice to make use of the plain language routine. Often non-compliance is a communication issue. It's not possible to determine a patient's health literacy level based on their appearance, age, education, language, or culture. The teach back method is a way to gauge patient understanding and ensure that important information is conveyed.